K tutorial number 4, defining in plus plus, lesson 3. In this lesson, we add the semantics of variable increment. In doing so, we learn how to take syntactic constructs and rules and then use such text to instruct the compile tool to generate the desired language model that is amenable for exhaustive analysis. The variable increment rule is self-explanatory. We can now run programs like our div.imp program introduced in lesson 1. Do it. The addition of increment makes the evaluation of expressions have side effects that, in combination with the non-determinism allowed by the strictness attributes in how expression constructs evaluate their arguments, makes expressions in particular and programs in general have non-deterministic behaviors. One possible execution of the div.imp program assigns 1 to y's location, for example, but that program manifests several other behaviors too. To see all the final state behaviors that a program can have, you can call the kran tool with the option minus minus search. Oops, we see only one solution, the same as when we ran it without search. Here is what happens. Kran can only explore as much of the transition system associated to a program as compile allowed the generated language model to yield. Since most of the K users are interested in language models that execute efficiently, that is, in faster interpreters for the defined languages, by default compile optimizes the generated language model for execution. In particular, it inserts no backtracking markers, which Keran uses when called with the minus minus search option in order to systematically generate the entire transition system associated to a program. This is why Keran only showed us one solution when run with the minus minus search option on div.imp. We next explain how to tell compile in what kind of language model we are interested for analysis purposes. When we experiment with non-determinism due to evaluation strategies of language constructs, we should keep in mind that compile allows us to configure two important parameters called superheat and respectively supercool. Superheat tells what language constructs we want the generated language model to allow for exhaustive non-deterministic analysis and supercool tells what rules we want to trigger the search for a next behavior. If you want to explore the entire behavior space due to non-deterministic evaluation strategies then you should include all the language constructs in the superheat option and all the rules in the supercool option. This may sound to a key beginner like the obvious thing to always do, but trust us, it is way too much in practice when you deal with large languages. There are simply too many behaviors for Kran to consider and it will likely hang on you or crash. For example, a small 10 statement program where each statement uses one strict expression construct already has more than 1,000 behaviors for Keran to explore. Driven by practical needs of its users, the K tool therefore allows you to finely tune the generated language models using the two options above. Metaphorically, the super prefix is meant to fully incorporate in the generated language model the theoretical meaning of the corresponding operation. Super heat indicates strict language constructs whose heating rules have to be considered as backtracking markers for search and super cool indicates rules which enforce the application of the corresponding cooling rules of those constructs. To state which constructs are super heat and which rules are super cool, and not only for these reasons, the K tool allows you to tag any productions and any rules. You can do this the same way we tagged rules with a structural keyword in earlier tutorials. Put a tag in brackets. You can associate multiple tags to the same construct or rule and more than one construct or rule can have the same tag. As an example, let us tag the division construct with division, the lookup rule with lookup, and the increment rule with increment. The least intrusive way to enforce our current language to explore the entire non-determinism due to the strictness of division is to compile it with the following options, superheat division and supercool lookup and increment. In other words, we want to explore the non-determinism due only to the heating rules corresponding to the division construct 
and we want to search for new behaviors to be triggered only by the lookup and increment rules. Indeed, note that no other rule but these two can ever apply while the division operation is heated. Now the command krun div.imp minus minus search shows us all five behaviors of this program. Interestingly, one of the five behaviors yields a division by zero. It will take you a little to master the use of these super options, but they can be quite useful when you experiment with your language designs or when you formally analyze programs for certain kinds of errors. Please let us know if you ever need even finer grained control over the non-determinism of your language models. Before we conclude this lesson, we'd like to let you know one trick, which you will hopefully not overuse. You can tag things in your k-definition with compile option names, and those things will be automatically included in their corresponding options. For example, if you take the division production with superheat and the lookup and increment rules with supercool, then the command Compile imp is completely equivalent to the previous compile command. Please use this default behavior with caution, or even better, try to avoid using it. You may be tempted to add the superheat and supercool tags to lots of things and then forget about them. Your language models will then be increasingly slower when you execute them and you may wonder why. This convention is typically convenient when you want to quickly experiment with non-determinism and you do not want to bother inventing tag names and calling compile with options. In the next lesson, we add input-output to our language and learn how to generate a model of it which behaves like an interactive interpreter.